Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, if you say you want to grow your business, how much risk do you want to take? That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, Stern. Before life in the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company, and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. I am a small business owner and I got to tell you that I've been very comfortable hitting singles. You know, some people are going for the fences with every every swing and I go for singles and it served me well, but I sometimes wonder, you know, should I go for the double? Should I go for the triple or the inside the park home run? To talk about that today, a good friend, Ami Kassar, he's the CEO of Multifunding. Thank you for coming on the show. Jeff, thanks. Pleasure to be with you today. Yes. Well, I should brag on you because uh, Ami and I worked together for a few months uh, a few months back and uh, just a joy and one of the few people that I can I can text at six in the morning <laughs> and he's already been up for three hours. So uh, you are a, a small business guru and uh, you work with businesses from all over the, the country. Uh, this is how I grow my business and how much risk do I want to take? I'll let you take it. Take it from there. Sure. So, Jeff, let me ask, ask a question with a question. Sure. So, if you were to, uh, you're a small business owner like me, and if you were to uh, be given a, a gift today, you had to invest it in your business or the money was going to go away, what would you do with it? That is a wonderful question. I might start using that on other people that I'm talking to. So what would you do with it? What would I do with it? I think I would probably uh, open up Houston or open up Austin or San Antonio. There, there needs to be another one of these in another Texas city. So why aren't you doing that? Let's see. <laughs> hey, whose show is this? <laughs> you invited me on. <laughs> uh, that, that is a very good question. And I, I think I, I'm going to give some more thought to it. Because that, 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 to me, that's, that's uh, going for either the fences or at least the double. Yeah. So, again, if you're going to use debt, and maybe you have cash flow to do it, or maybe you, it doesn't matter, but if you're going to use debt, the first thing to do is to use it responsibly. Yes. Um, I don't like people using debt just, oh, let's go borrow money and have fun, or go buy a yacht, or do this. That's not how it works. But the SBA is one of the best kept secrets in government, so you could borrow $350,000 if you wanted to, and you would have a monthly payment of around $4,200 for 10 years. Wow. Okay. And without any prepayment penalty. And so if you could you afford a monthly payment of forty two hundred dollars? Of course. Yeah. So it's just a different way to think about growth. So what I encourage people to do is think about what's your goal? Where do you want your business to be in three years from now? And then invariably we all should have a goal. It's very hard to work without a goal. And then based on what your goal is, there are tools that we're all missing to get there. So for some of us, it might be a new market. For some of us, it might be an acquisition. For some of us, it might be new products. It doesn't really matter what it is. And then what's your plan to get there? And what's your financing plan to get there? And financing strategy is offense and defense. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the pandemic. And we're going to show an Inc. Magazine article that you authored. The pandemic has given your business a chance to pivot. Don't waste it. Let's talk about that article. What did you discuss in there? Sure. So the basic idea is that there's two ways to look at all this change and all this chaos around us. And some people just look at it with genuine fear and they're at a stage of their life where they just want to retreat and they want to put their money under their mattress and they want to just hang on tight. There are other people like me who see this as opportunity. And we will say all this change creates opportunity. Now, how are we going to take advantage of it? of it. And it's the opportunity to pivot. It's the opportunity to evolve. If COVID taught me one thing, it's about working smarter, not harder. And so what are we, what's our plan going forward? What are the opportunities that COVID has created for you and your business? 
and how are you going to take advantage of them? Absolutely. So we're going to also show a video of you on Channel 8 uh, not too long ago. You get calls from all over the country uh, giving advice to the public. Uh, do you think there's a lot of misconceptions about debt? I mean, uh, we're kind of taught that debt is scary. Don't go into debt. And you're saying that in the right circumstances, debt can be a very smart business move. So debt can be scary and never run into debt. And especially if it's too good to be true. Just don't do it, okay? But debt used responsibly can be an incredible tool to grow. Of the Fortune 500 companies, I think there are five who have no debt on their balance sheet. So you've sometimes early on in our businesses, we are afraid, we, we take all the risk, we sell our firstborn because we have, no for, we have no choice, right? And then hopefully we get through those painful first few years and you take a breath, you're like, I got this now. But actually, that's the time, once you've got it and you've figured out the formula, that's the time to f f put the fuel in the fire and to expand it and to blow it out. And that's when it's probably time and actually a good time to borrow money so you can grow faster. Well, let's talk about your best-selling book you came out with a few years ago called The Growth Dilemma. We're going to put that on the screen, and, and I'm told that you're thinking about another book, which I'll let you talk about. But, but give us a takeaway from The Growth Dilemma. Sure. The core idea of the growth dilemma, which I think is a good question for everyone to think about, is I gave you a gift of a million dollars today, um, and you had to decide where, where to invest it in your business or a mutual fund of your choice. Where would you put the chips, and what would you do with it? So would you put it all in your business, and then where would you invest it in your business? If you put none of it in your business, maybe you're in the wrong business. Instead of just flipping the question, the money is there. Sometimes the biggest, people's biggest excuse is that they don't have the money. Although often, if you have a good strategy, the money is the easiest thing to solve for. So the money is there. Now, where are you going to put the money and how are you going to do about it? The book goes through 10 or 12 vignettes of different entrepreneurs and how they answer that question and gives you a framework to think about that. And let's talk about the book that you're working on now. Sure. So in the pandemic, um, uh, we helped tens of thousands of people just advising them and mentoring them and coaching them through the PPP and the EIDL and the Main Street Lending Program and all the different programs. And we we were almost forced to come up with a, a community site, which uh, is going to soon be rebranded re amisites.com, where I write a daily blog post, and that was our way of disseminating information. And a lot of that came also to be, some of it was tactical information about the different loan programs, but a lot of it were also ideas, suggestions, motivation, just things to do when you're in a crisis. Yeah, you're also a, an amazing speaker. In fact, you're in town to speak to EO, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's go ahead and, and show your sizzle reel. My name is Ami Kassar. I'm the founder and CEO of Multifunding. What we do is work with business owners and entrepreneurs like you across the country. Eight and a half years ago, I lost my big, fat corporate job. I got fired by the bankruptcy trustees on a Friday. On my way home, I went to the bank and deposited a check for my full home equity line of credit. I then went home and told my wife what I did. And I started my company, Multifunding, on Saturday. And what we do is, as we work with business owners to help them get loans, it was a complete bloodbath for the first year. It took nine months before we closed one loan. And now we close about three a week, and we do it around the nation. So you have a million dollars today that you didn't have this morning, and you have to decide what you're going to do with it. You can choose to put all of the money in your business, invest that million bucks. You can invest, choose to put most of it in your business. You can invest to put just a little bit of the business and most of the mutual fund, or all in the mutual fund. Go ahead and answer with the polls. What would you do with the money? This and we have about 30% of the people who are going to say they believe in themselves so much, they're going to put all million bucks in their business. If you think about it, if we each took $20 out of our pocket as a business owner or entrepreneur, there are one of three things we can do with it. We can spend it, go buy a nice bottle of wine tonight at dinner, although I'm not sure $20 will get you too far. We can reinvest it in our business, which we often do without realizing it, even though we might not get as big of a return. Whenever possible, we should be taking some chips and putting them on the side to invest in something else. 
if you really could get 20, 30, 40 or higher percent returns on the investments in your business, why wouldn't you go borrow money at six, seven, eight percent and use leverage in a positive way to get that done? Wow, I, I need to come hear you speak. And you're speaking today to, to our EO group here in Dallas, Entrepreneurs Organization. Yeah. That's how we met. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, EO and, and the value that you get from EO. Yeah, Entrepreneurs, Entrepreneurs Organization is an incredible organization. And I would say if we learned anything in the pandemic, it's you can't go at it. You're a business owner or a CEO, and um, it's lonely at the top, and it's scary, and you don't know what the heck to do. And I encourage you to surround yourself by a community. I personally love EO. Um, I'm also a member of Vistage. But try to find yourself a group that connects with you so that you can lean on them and they can lean on you and you can get support, advice, and, and, and help. And I've got to brag on Ami because he's built a really strong reputation nationwide with EO because I've been in a number of different forums and somebody's asking a question about... Uh, uh, lending and they say, have you talked to Ami? <laughs> so <laughs> That's why I don't sleep. <laughs> uh, we've only got a minute left, so uh, f leave the audience with a tidbit. I mean, the small business owner who's watching this and says, yes, I hear what you're saying and I, and I get it that Amazon lost a lot of money and, and had debt for years and Jeff Bezos did okay, but the pandemic is scary. Delta virus is scary. Uh, you know, wh what is your advice? Two pieces of advice. First of all, Jeff's not going to say this, but I've worked with in a lot of public relations and communications firms over the years. This guy is the only guy I've ever met who knows what the heck he's doing. Okay, Thank you. Number one. Number two, um, take your risk assessment. In the growth dilemma, there's a tool where you can take your risk assessment and get your risk score. There's nothing more important than a good night's sleep. Uh, making financing choices is a delicate balance between emotions and rationalities. But sort yourself out, figure out what you want to be, where you want to go, what your goals are, how much risk you want to take, and make your plan, and choose your lane, and stick to it. Wow. Thank you so much, Ami. You're amazing. We're going to end with both of your websites. AmiKazar.com is his speaker website, and then Multifunding.com is his professional website. Ami, thank you for coming on the show. Great. Thanks for having me, buddy. You bet. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time.